Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carol Armstrong, and I will be hosting this Dalaby webinar. Before starting, let me explain how the tools work so you can chat with us if you'd like to. On the right of your screen, there are two options, chat and questions. In the chat options, you can comment freely throughout the presentation. Our Dalaby teams are behind the scenes and they will be happy to help. In the questions option, you can ask our experts questions and they will reply to you individually. At the end of the webinar, we will pick up and answer the most frequently asked questions live. Today, we are with Sébastien Jeu. Hello, Sébastien. Hello, Carol. So, let's remind ourselves of our webinar topic, leaking toilets in public places, how to stop wasting potable water. The issue of water shortages is becoming more and more prevalent on a global scale. Public and commercial places are preparing for summer droughts, and in 2022, the UK water efficiency strategy was developed to improve water efficiency in all sectors by 2030. Sebastian, are you suggesting that we go searching for wasted drinking water? Well, water shortages are top of the agenda in most countries because it's a fundamental environmental issue that affects everyone. So in addition to this, inflation and rising energy costs are making water more expensive Therefore, saving water is an ecological and economic concern. So yes, for a long time, Delaby has been seeking out wasted water. For almost 40 years, we have been developing systems that save significant amounts of water. So for example, we have non-concursive and electronic taps that are already saving more than 80% of water in those buildings where they are fitted. So our message has never been more important. We must save water. Now, it's interesting to see that the solutions offered by Delaby save water, but don't compromise on comfort and hygiene. So, and our preferred method is to reduce waste. By definition, waste does not bring any additional comfort to the user. It is just a waste of resources. Um, today, I would like to focus on toilet flush systems. In public toilets, this is where we waste the most of water. And in most of countries, we actually flush with potable water. Do you mean that in 2023, our toilets are supplied with drinking water? Yes, and there is no difference between the water in the toilets and the water that we drink from the tap. The water used to flush the toilet is clean and pure. It comes from the natural sources and it is treated before uh, arriving in our bathroom. So it is completely useless to flush toilets which, with such good quality water. And what's worse, we waste incredible amounts of water due to unsuitable flush systems. So on one hand, we need to save money on the resource, drinking water, which is becoming scarcer at a global level. And on the other hand, there is significant waste occurring in our toilets. But nowadays we can see that in both residential and public buildings, there is a small and a large flush button. So I'm wondering what is the problem of water wastage that you mentioned. It's true that manufacturer's systems have optimized their flush systems with the dual flush buttons, three liters and six liters, uh, or even two liters and four liters. This is excellent because there's no need to use 12 liters to flush the toilet. And with an appropriate toilet pan, you use less and less water. However, the main problem that remains is leaking in toilets with a system. And it's these leaks that lead to huge overconsumption. The solution that we are going to discuss is the Labby's systemless flush, which really prevents leaks. Of course, it's true that we don't consider the leaks factor. You mentioned a huge overconsumption. That's quite a claim. Do you have any idea of the amount of waste caused by these leaks? Yes, so um, according to Thames Water, a steadily leaking toilet can waste on average 600 of litres of water per day. And in reality, 600 liters per day, it's still a very small leak. Imagine an experiment where you pour one thimbleful of water into the toilet every second. This trickle of water, which you can hardly notice seeping into the toilet, will amount to 600 liters by the end of the day. And that means that when you notice a leak in the toilet, it generally wastes more than 600 liters per day. It's quite hard to imagine what 600 litres of water represents. 
Yes, that's true. Let's take a unit of measure that everyone can understand. For example, um, a one and a half liter um, bottle of water. An uncontrolled leak equates to 400 bottles of water. And that means about 67 packs of water. And that's a good comparison because as we discussed before, the water in your toilet is as pure as the water in your tap. That is very worrying. So is it safe to say that these leaks are very rare and are quickly repaired? Unfortunately, no. With flushing systems, there is a big difference between what happens at home and in the public places. At home, you are the one who pays the water bill and you are the one who looks after the repairs, which is normally for just one or two toilets. But if you notice a leak then, you can act quickly. And if you don't, you face the consequences by paying the water bill. In public buildings, it's different. Um, have you ever told a team of a, at a motorway service station that the toilets are leaking or in an airport? And what about the students? Do they report the leaks when, there are, when they can notice them in school toilets? As I mentioned, many leaks are not even visible. And when they are, they are rarely reported. And often, several toilets are affected at the same time. So it's easy to see why water consumption is increasing. To get an idea of the problem, just look more closely at the toilets you use outside your home to see that leaks are everywhere. To spot invisible leaks, try this little experiment, Carol. Place a piece of toilet paper at the top of the toilet pan. And if it gets wet, you will see that actually the toilet is leaking. And a few drops are enough to indicate a leak. With our experience of the market, we established that about one in three public toilets leak, actually. One third of all toilets, that's a lot. But I imagine that some facilities are better than others. Yes, of course. Um, in some buildings, maintenance is managed very well, and there are fewer leaks. But this comes at a high cost, because scale develops in the plastic mechanisms in systems, and eventually causes leaks that maintenance team must constantly repair. So they must remove the mechanism to clean and replace it. And in the UK, the average cost of qualified plumber is about 50 pounds per hour. So all this time spent on repairs is very expensive for the buildings concerned. And you must also consider the cost of spare parts as well as the labor. So either way with assistance, it's the building owners that lose out. Either you ignore the leaks and pay the large water bill or they set up an efficient and proactive maintenance program, but they have to pay for the maintenance costs and spare parts. And that's without discussing the ecological problem uh, that this poses. That is a large water bill. Do we know how much? Is it possible to quantify the additional costs that leaks represent? So we can provide an estimate by using a simple example. Let's take a building like a cinema, which has 15 toilets with systems. Among these 15 toilets, five of them leak, wasting 600 liters of water every day. That's 600 liters for each leaking toilet. So five leaking toilets equate to three cubic meters per day. In the UK, one cubic meter costs roughly 4.7 pounds. Over the course of the year, the cinema will lose 5,100 pounds of wasted water. That's the equivalent of 730,000 bottles of water that is lost every year. To give you an idea, that's the same amount that the entire population of Birmingham and Edinburgh combine drink in a day. And we're talking about the buildings where there are only 15 toilets. Imagine a hotel with 150 rooms or a stadium with hundreds of toilets. We are talking about tens of thousands of pounds lost per year and millions of packs of water. That's significant. To conclude about leaks, can you imagine the amount of money and water lost at the national level if we include all those buildings which have a leaking system? It's true. This seems to represent a disproportionate waste of water. I think we'd all now like to know what solutions Delaby offers to counter the problem of leaking toilets in public places. Yes, so the Labby system is systemless, also known as direct flush, which is much more suitable for public washroom. The operation principle is simple. Instead of working with a system, 
the flush system is connected directly to the water supply, hence its name direct flush. With this kind of connection, it's possible to flush using the power of the main system. So it is possible to evacuate all waste with one uh, flush, actually. Scale, which is the enemy of the plastic mechanisms in systems, is no longer a problem here because of this powerful flush and also the absence of a system. So Delabis system-less flush, therefore, makes it possible to avoid leaks and additional maintenance costs. If this system avoids leaks and the associated um, additional maintenance costs, in what way is it specifically suited to public places? So public toilets are a high traffic space where each toilet can be used more than 200 times per day. This means that in public washrooms, each mechanism is activated 10 times more than at home on average. And in certain places like airports, some toilets are used up to 1500 times a day. In addition to this, some users are careless with the equipment or even want to vandalize it. This puts a lot of strain on the flush systems. And from the outset, Delabi designed its systemless flushing system to meet these challenges. The materials chosen are robust and the mechanisms are tested to more than 500,000 operations. This makes it possible to have a reliable and leak-free flush over the time. That's very clear, thank you. So, to go back to what you said about being reliable and leak-free, does this mean that Dalaby's flush systems never leak? Well, when they reach the end of their life, the mechanisms sometimes end up leaking. But I can confirm that Dalaby systemless flush is a leak-free system for several reasons. First of all, for its longevity. A Dalaby flush mechanism can work perfectly for years, even with very intensive use, while a system flush system will leak after a few months. It's inevitable. The systemless flush is leak-free because it's easy to maintain. And it's very difficult to access the mechanisms of wall-hung toilets that we see everywhere nowadays. It takes a long time to access the mechanism, either from the front or from the top. The access space is very limited and dismantling the mechanism is done blind in an uncomfortable position. So on the other hand, uh, the levy systems are accessible from the front and to replace the mechanism, uh, it's simple, you just have to unscrew the cartridge from the, from the front and replace it. It takes a maximum of two minutes. Another advantage is that spare parts are widely available and at a reasonable price. And technical support is available if installers have any questions or problems. So in addition, addition to offering a flush system that saves water and being more reliable, the Delibili solution is also easier to maintain? Yes, exactly. This is a very good solution for building managers since they can save on both counts. They no longer have to pay large water bills and they save on maintenance costs as well, with fewer interventions that takes less time. We have the perfect example to illustrate how systemless flush systems perform. In 2020, the elderly home in Douai, uh, in north of France, believed in us and replaced its 280 system flush systems with Delabi systemless systems. The initial problem was simple. The building was no longer able to meet its water consumption objectives, resulting in the sliding budget. So first of all, they invested in maintaining the existing facilities to control the problem. And every day, a plumber spent two hours inspecting toilet systems to identify faults and repair the leaks. And it was very expensive uh, in terms of labor and replacement parts. Despite the rigorous approach, consumption continued to increase until it reached a peak of 3,000 cubic meters per month. This is more than double the consumption plan for the building. So, when Delabi proposed a systemless solution to solve the problem of overconsumption, the operation team uh, naturally agreed to give it a try. So it cost around 700 euros for each room, and it was installed. The, the result was immediate. Okay, the monthly consumption fell from 3,000 cubic meters per month to less than 500 cubic meters a month. The water savings achieved paid back the initial investment within a few months, actually and the building has maintained its lower consumption level since then. So after three years of operation, 
the average water consumption remains below 500 cubic meters per month. And from a technical perspective, replacing a flush valve with a systemless flush did not pose any problems. The systems were connected to the existing risers, and so that there was no need for any significant work. And finally, the maintenance teams no longer need to inspect the installations uh, daily, and they can revert to the usual annual maintenance. So the same actually apply for urinals. In the UK, we use um, lots of urinals with systems, uh, and we can actually uh, provide direct flush for urinals as well. Uh, there's one example that comes to my mind. It's a university, the University of Burbank in London, that previously was using um, systems, flushing systems for urinals. They were consuming an average of 10 cubic meters per week to flush two urinals. And then they moved to the Dolabi direct, uh, direct flush urinal, Tempomatic 4, and they are now um, consuming just 100 liters of water per week to flush through two urinals. That means that they are saving 99% of water. These examples illustrate what you were saying perfectly. The benefits are clear. So how do you explain why this system is not installed everywhere? Well, the purpose of this webinar is to introduce systemless flushing to our attendees. The primary reason why this system is not installed uh, is that it's not well known or that people have preconceived ideas about it. Those who are familiar with direct flush often think about the old systems with large push buttons and exposed pipe work, which was typical in schools. But today, with a new Tamperflux 3 range, direct flush is also a stylish system, which meets the need for comfort and elegance. This range is available with or without a frame system and with a range of different control plates. The Tamperflux 3 black glass control plate has won several design awards, which shows that systemless flush has entered the modern era. And there is no longer any need to choose between water savings and design. We can clearly see how the design has evolved. Earlier, you mentioned hygiene. I think we're all familiar with the idea of dirty public toilets. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Poorly flushed toilets, it's disgusting. With a system flush system that works, if the first flush does not flush everything away, you have to wait for the system to refill, to flush again. And in public places, not everyone has the patience to wait. So the result is that we often have unpleasant surprises in public toilets. And when the toilet leaks, it's even worse as the flush is not at all effective. It's very unpleasant. The systemless flush is more powerful and therefore the first flush is more efficient. And if a second flush is required, there's no need to wait for the system to refill. And this significantly improves hygiene in the washroom. In addition, there is the question of the development of bacteria in the reservoir. A system holds an average of about nine liters of stagnant water. So imagine, for example, a school that is closed over the summer. There is water stagnating in every system during a period where the temperatures are high. So it's the ideal breeding ground for bacteria such as Legionella. However, public buildings are required to monitor for Legionella where there is a risk of contamination. And weekly flushing is required if outlets are not used for seven days or more. So systemless flush systems are a good solution. There is no system where bacteria can develop. The water in the system is under pressure, and when a flush takes place, the bowl and the mechanism are cleaned eff effectively. Um, in addition, when we, uh, we can also talk about the Tempomatic dual control, which is equipped with a periodic duty flush that takes place every 24 hours after the last use. In other words, the automatic uh, or electronic system activates a flush when the toilets are not in use to guarantee total hygiene in the installation. So even though the school is closed for the summer holidays, the water in the toilet will be renewed regularly. That makes sense. There are so many advantages, and yet you said earlier that systemless flush systems are not widely installed because the technology is unfamiliar. Are there any other reasons in your opinion? Yes, that's correct. In my view, one of the major reasons that guides the specifier's choice is habit. 
the system flush system is known to all. And so it's installed in daily basis. It's the same system we find at home, so it's familiar to us. But everyone has had leaks in the home and knows how difficult it can be to replace parts. So this is why the lobby says that we must stop using systems in public places. Of course, that's obvious. And in terms of installation costs, since the mechanism connects directly to the supply pipe, I imagine there is an additional cost to adapt the pipe diameter. What is the additional cost of installing a systemless flush? Well, what you are talking about is the question of sizing the pipes uh, to accommodate systemless systems. And to work correctly, the systemless flush needs to be supplied by a pipe with an internal diameter of 20 millimeters and with a flow rate of one liter per second at one bar of dynamic pressure. Put it simply, this means that compared to a conventional system, you have to connect the systemless flush system with a slightly larger pipe. There are two ways to approach this subject. Firstly, we can say that wasting so much drinking water is scandalous and that it's worth investing in slightly larger pipes during installation or renovation to avoid it. Secondly, we can also look at the numbers of what it actually costs. If we take the example of the care home in Douai, they have invested 190,000 euros in the installation, including the pipe sizing. Thanks to the water savings that they have made, they have recovered this cost in a few months. And just to remind you, we have to take into account the time they spent on maintenance and also the cost of spare parts that they had to replace. So we asked several technical design offices what the additional sizing cost was to install a direct flush. And the answer is that in many cases, it's close to zero and it can be up to 3% of the plumbing envelope. So this will pay for itself in a few months. By the way, we have planned a second webinar to take a closer look at these more technical subjects and to answer more specific questions. The investment is negligible, especially when we see how quickly it pays for itself. And as for the pipe sizing, what would you say to reassure design teams and installers who are reluctant to install such a system? Yeah, so all the necessary information to get them started is in the Delabi catalog and on the website. They can also ask the area sales manager for help. The systemless flush system is not a new system and it has been widely installed in schools for many decades now. For many design offices and installers, it's more a simple question of updating the knowledge rather than a new discovery. Given the economic and ecological issues around drinking water, it's a real added value to be able to offer this system. When we see the potential water savings, thanks to Dalaby's systemless system, I completely agree, don't hesitate any longer. And now, we are approaching the end of our discussion. Please could you summarise in a few words the essential points to remember? Yes, yes, so the, the key points that I would like our participants to remember is that we simply have to stop installing system toilet systems in public places and switch to a more suitable system. De la B system less flush. It's a system that's simple to implement and requires a small investment that pays for itself in a few months. It saves valuable maintenance time and allows public places to offer the users more hygienic and ecological washroom facilities. The water efficiency plan calls for the UK to reduce waste and be more water efficient by 2030. With De la B, you can achieve water savings of 80%. This is an essential ecological measure for the future. Thank you, Sebastian, for your clear and concise summary. Thank you, Carol. And thank you to all of you for your participation and see you again for the next Dullaby webinar.